would be nice if one of these gentlemen would let your wife have a chair, would it? No, no, I think No, let somebody come in. Thank you. 
son. Just put the foot in my side. Just what? Put it on his side. Yeah, hold on, Chuck. You don't want to get the glare. Man.
retired effective 1 July 1995 per AFR 35-7 in Greater Master Sergeant and assigned to retired reserve until 26 August 2005. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents <coughs> greetings. This is to certify that Master Sergeant James O. Hayes, Jr., having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force on the first day of July, 1995, assigned Raymond C. Bishop, Colonel, Commander 93rd Bomb Wing, and Ronald R. Fogelman, General, Air Force Chief of Staff.
obviously uh, Jeff Bragg, you know, the folks that help make all these things, right? I'd like to present this to you. Uh, something a little more than that, okay? As you're leaving, uh, I've been through a lot of retirement ceremonies and typically very hard to pry shift personnel in at 11 o'clock during the day to go to anything, okay? Maybe a free lunch at Sulu or something like that. But I see a lot of them here, okay? So sort of a testament to the kind of leadership and friendship that you've extended to the flight people and what you've been here and also to the rest of the staff. So I'd like to present this to you. Congratulate you on your retirement. I know you're going to do well. And also, thanks, old glory. Is it supposed to be a band? That's all right. <laughs> How much did you pay him, Rich? Twenty bucks. Yes, I am. I 
myself where I've been subject to judiciary uh, inspection, or eyes, and I know the degree of meticulousness it takes to manage these sensor programs, the fact that he's sitting here getting accommodation, retiring on good terms, and getting uh, uh, and, and got promoted to boot tells me that he obviously did a lot of great things in managing this program because that's the type of thing that can kill you in an inspection of that nature. And it requires almost an accountant's level of attention to detail to maintain. So he obviously excelled and did well. He moved on to uh, Whiteman Air Force Base. Uh, he was there for about two years. He was uh, the BIS operator, uh, area supervisor, and also worked with the wind security controller. And then he did two tours of duty at uh, Kunsan at the tip of the spear. Another tough assignment, having spent some time in Korea myself, I can attest firsthand to that. Uh, and that's probably one of the, the real tough things in the Air Force because those folks literally uh, live a good uh, third of their time while they're over there in chemical warfare suits playing war games. And it wouldn't have been an easy assignment, I'm sure. But he obviously did well there because he was also uh, in charge of their sensor system. Don't pick a, a stews to do that kind of work for you, I guarantee you. Uh, he moved on from there to Vandenberg. He was over in Vandenberg uh, for uh, about three years. Uh, worked as a, a shift sergeant and, and also uh, as the NCLIC security operations. And then finally came here to Castle in September 93. Uh, really just behind me. And here, uh, he worked on shift and then we brought him in to work closer to these issues. And that was a position that we created from scratch. And uh, it's not something that all of us are accustomed to doing because we we're, were kind of breaking new territory. Uh, most of us have never been in an organization where we had to downsize and get rid of people and tie their departures through time. It was tried to, tried to make it as convenient as possible for the people involved, uh, accounting for all the resources and where they were going to go, and, uh, and not necessarily an easy task. And the closure plan that he helped us put together. I uh, remember the first time we ever briefed that uh, was actually used as the uh, citation indicated as a benchmark for the rest of the way. If you went beyond any meeting where you've seen these things displayed, uh, they're, they're a, a, a mirror copy of the one that, that James developed was here. I asked, uh, I asked these folks to always give me some significant inputs into some things in their career that they considered important because I like to highlight them. And, uh, and he's listed a few which I'd like to share with you. Uh, one of the first things that he, uh, he noted that he did was he coordinated, coordinated security for the first Titan IV launches at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, which was Air Free. I spent a little time in Vandenberg once in my career while I was attending uh, missile school over there. And uh, I've seen a couple of those launches and, and the degree of security that you require for them because of the public the spectacle that they create uh, is a tough job. Very well there. Over at the Kunsan, he was NCO in quarter twice. Uh, at Vandenberg, California, he was the uh, senior NCO in quarter. And, uh, and this is something that I can vividly remember. Some of you probably weren't even in the Air Force then. But this was just about the time that I was preparing to be commissioned. And I was initially selected as a missile launch officer when I got out of OTS. Thank God. Uh, and through politics and some old boy networking, I was eventually able to have that change. Down the hole, uh, although I did spend almost four months in Vandenberg in the airport before I was successful in my signing change to come back to the top career field. It's not something I think I would have enjoyed. But my point is, just about the time I was informed that I've been selected for the OTS and I was ultimately destined to become a missile chief, uh, is the time they had that big missile mishap out of the Little Rock involving a Titan missile site that exploded killed three people and injured six others. And uh, he was one of the people who was responsible for evaluating the surrounding city uh, when this occurred. Uh, and I remember that most vividly myself. He was rated the best uh, managed sensor program by the Defense Nuclear Agency inspectors in Kunsan. Uh, and also in 1988, he was selected to brief the NATO Defense College on the mission and history of Whiteman Air Force Base. So you can see that James has done a lot of significant things in his life. He tells me that uh, he initially intends to remain in Northern California uh, and then eventually may reside.
die in Florida, but he's not 100% sure of that yet. Again, we're very happy that uh, your wife, Priscilla, and uh, your son and daughter, uh, Stephen and Kimberly, are able to be with you today. And at this point, I will uh, turn and tell you over to you, James, and give you an opportunity to come up and offer some comments of your mother.
operational test and evaluation program for the ground launch cruise missile uh, system at the Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah and Fort Lewis, Washington, in which he underwent training with the uh, 5th Special Forces uh, in providing security for those assets. Because, uh, as you know, a cruise missile is, a, uh, is one that sometimes is uh, capable of being deployed in the field, and the uh, security arrangements for those can be considerable. So he, he helped take part in the, some groundbreaking benchmarking experiences uh, that proved very successful, uh, and we never lost one. Uh, I also know, and, and most of you, if you pay any attention at all to the news, that he, uh, he obviously had a tough tour at Greenham Comp. Greenham Comet, uh, because he was there when they deployed the first cruise missile, uh, and uh, they had thousands of demonstrators uh, ringing that base, and uh, they, uh, they apparently had one demonstration in excess of 45,000 people in April of 83, and I can remember seeing anything on CNN News about this kind of thing, and none of them ever breached the base perimeter. He participated uh, as a riot control cop and uh, in quality many of those. He did six months in Saudi uh, in uh, from January to uh, July of 1992 and uh, while he was there he was uh, responsible for establishing the initial uh, command and control element that went in there. They managed to do that in just an hour and a half uh, for rescue operations uh, in which uh, three GIs were uh, swept from the road as a result of flash flood. One of the things I found in, in reviewing his, his life uh, and decorations and so forth is that uh, when he was uh, a youngster, I guess by about 14, uh, he received the civilian Carnegie Bronze Medal for Heroism and the Sons of the American Revolution Bronze Good Citizenship Award uh, for entering a home that was uh, engulfed in flames that was uh, burning so much that the fire department later said that they would not have gone in to rescue how many family members and children? Three. Three family members uh, back, to, back in his home. Uh, and that's something that, quite frankly, it doesn't surprise me uh, because I know the caliber of person he is. But yet I was, I was pleasantly surprised to hear that he had done that. Uh, and I think he needs to deserve the title of that for that one. So then that he was destined for bigger things leadership, and clearly he has done that by excelling in that career too. He also was named the Security NCO of the Year uh, for uh, our squadron here back in 1993. He says, uh, you know, there's a little purple here. We say, what, the, what are your plans uh, after retirement? He said he's going to retire in around Mystics, Connecticut, become a bum, go back to school, and live off his wife's income.
trustworthy, dependable, competent. And I always slept well when I knew they were out there minding the ship uh, while I was here as their commander. And their whole career attested that. Sometimes it's difficult from where we sit to appreciate the significant contribution of people like all of us that made to the freedom of this country and the contributions that we have made basically to the you know, American way of life. We sometimes kind of take it for granted. You know, we come to work, we put on uniform, we go home. Uh, we sometimes we don't treat this like a, a, a routine job. But in peacetime, we're not getting shot at, we're not mobilizing and things like this. Uh, sometimes you fail to lose sight of, uh, of the real sacrifices that have been made. The time I know, just looking at their records, where they spent time in missile field, they spent time in PUI, they were away from their families. But they're still able to hold that together, so they're obviously good family people, uh, a, a, an attribute that, that I certainly admire and appreciate. But more importantly, they were also with us during the time in our history as a country and uh, in our history uh, internationally when we saw the crumbling of the, Ber of the Berlin Wall, we saw the demise of communism as we know it today. Uh, its legacy is, uh, is a lot of turmoil in Europe and that part of the world. But nonetheless, when George Bush was able to execute the stand down order, taking our bombers off the alert. I suspect Rich, certainly here at the, at the castle, was part of executing that. And wherever you were, James, I'm sure you saw the same thing. And it's only because people like us and people like them who have led the way and grown up through the system, did their jobs every day, supervised their people, took care of them, took care of their needs, did their duty, paid attention to detail, stood to watch that back when we truly had a menace from the Soviet Union that when the commissars got together and they talked about whether or not they ever wanted to launch a first strike against the USA, they looked around and they could see the kind of protection that the SAC bomber and missile forces had. They knew we had guys like this on duty, and they said, not today, comrade, not today. And it's because of people like that and the dedication and the hard time, the difficult the environmental conditions, the crappy weather, the insensitive supervisors, and heaven knows what else, probably an unappreciative public the test did what we had to do, that we are a better, stronger country today as a result of it. And I salute the Paul and for that. I too am preparing to separate from the service after a long career, and it's, uh, it's the type of camaraderie that I have formed along the way with people like this that I will genuinely miss. Uh, because when all of a sudden you done it for people that have, uh, that have made a big difference. And I will miss you both, and I hope that uh, whoever passes this way always hook me up because I would always be welcome in my home. We read a lot of formal letters from a lot of important people today uh, at this ceremony, uh, and I deliberately had them not read mine, partly because uh, it might sound a little vain, but yet also because uh, in the interest of time constraints, we didn't want this to last forever. But I think it's fitting that, uh, that I close by doing that, and if you'll indulge me for a moment, I would like to read the formal comments that I've given to each of you in a letter that will be enclosed with the, with the other items that we will receive today. Prior to doing that, I'd also like to ask the people that had anything to do with setting this up today, please just raise your hand for a moment. Mary. Mary, 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 Mary uh, and Jeff Bragg for the mm -hmm. wonderful uh, woodworking that he's done. And anyone else, I know Rochelle would probably play the hand in this. And I saw her bustling about in here. Wonderful job of setting this up. Very professional, is what we're noted for. Uh, my hat's off to all of you, and I appreciate you taking the time to come out and, and to share this experience with you, uh, with us. Uh, on that, I will close my comments by reading to you uh, my, uh, my letter of accommodation. is essentially the same for both of you. It says, on the occasion of your retirement from active duty, I wish to express to you my sincere desire for your continued success and join with your many friends in wishing you and your family the best possible futures. You, as much as anyone who has ever served, have helped foster and preserve the strong and honorable traditions of the mighty United States Air Force. Your loyalty, diligence, and teamwork have been instrumental in defending and preserving the freedom that your fellow countrymen and others throughout the free world continue to enjoy. To both of you, your professionalism and unmatched personal dedication to duty and country reflect great credit upon yourselves and the United States Air Force. Once again, on behalf of all your friends, 
past and present. I wish you both every success and happiness as you depart the service. You can be justifiably proud of your rewarding and patriotic career, as all of your family members can be of your, of your father and your spouses. And I know that you, in your own way, uh, as spouses, have played a significant role in your life because uh, of the sacrifices that have had to be made along the way. So at this point, I would ask you to please uh, remain. Congratulate them, share some words with them, review the wonderful mentors that they received. And I guess we'll have a, a little change in some duties, and then eventually we'll be going downtown for a, a luncheon at Sisters. Right. How many people think they're going to? Uh, Pardon me? How many people think they're going to go? All of you guys, huh? Please, 